Hi right, friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is Alan. I've always wanted to have access to time travel. I'd love to go 100 years into the future and see all the advancements that humanity has made and what life looks like. But then again, the whole idea also of traveling to our future terrifies me. Just like when you bump into Frank Underwood at a college frat party and he offers you a job. Sometimes it's just better not to know what's in store for you. The future is scary, so maybe then traveling into the past would be a lot more fun. I've always wanted to see Germany in 1933 so I could shoot Hitler in the face. Although I imagine I'd find myself in a line full of other time travelers who are there to do the same exact thing, kill Hitler. But then again, that's just what I would do. Today I want to take a look at a bunch of films and pick out basically the strangest and most unique uses of time travel. Now, a lot of the examples we'll be talking about today probably won't make that much sense and definitely won't be very scientifically based, but they all should be quite creative. In the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Big Bad Thanos snaps away about half of the galaxy's population in order to save it from, well, I don't know what, overpopulation? Doesn't he know that when countries become more developed, birth rates actually drop? Well, not with humans anyway, he must be worried about some degenerate alien race. Anyway, the Avengers must figure out a way to go back in time and basically redo everything Thanos has done. And they'll do it by traveling through the Quantum Realm. The Quantum Realm is reached by shrinking oneself with a pin particle to an extremely small subatomic size. Everything works differently in this realm, including time and space, which is why it's technically considered another dimension. I guess it's loosely based on quantum physics. Very, very loosely. By putting on these special suits, the Avengers are able to travel to a certain point in time and space of their choosing so that they can steal all the Infinity Stones and use them to snap everyone into existence once again. Next up, we're going to be looking at one of the more realistic and attainable time travel machines, and that is the Hot Tub Time Machine. A hot tub is more than just a method of bathing yourself. It's more than just a recreational activity. It's those two things combined. And if you're a slightly underachieving middle-aged man trying to relive the glory of your younger days and you get into an outdoor hot tub with a bunch of other sad middle-aged men and have a good old naked drunken time and spill an illegal Russian energy drink onto the control console, boom, not only will you travel back to your younger and better days, you will actually become your own younger self as well. Definitely one of the cooler side effects of this time travel method. In Interstellar, a series of blights have rendered all the crops on Earth more or less useless. Basically, the only crop left is corn, and humanity is about to lose that as well. In a last-ditch effort to save humanity, NASA sends a team of astronauts to find another habitable planet for humanity to restart on. The only problem is that even if we find that new planet to take over, humanity doesn't have the resources to take all of the people left on Earth into space. There is a half as attempt by some remaining NASA scientists to unlock how gravity works, but ultimately it's a futile attempt designed to keep the people left behind calm and dedicated to the task at hand. The real future of humanity is a large bank of eggs and sperms that is placed on the exploration ship searching for humanity's future. Luckily for all of us though, the pilot on that mission is Matthew McConaughey, and he's promised his daughter Jessica Chastain that he will one day see her again. McConaughey realizes that the only way that the scientists back on Earth can figure out this gravity problem is by collecting data from within a black hole, which is essentially a suicidal thing to do. But alright, 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 that doesn't stop McConaughey. He takes his trusted TARS droid and plunges straight into the event horizon of the black hole Gargantua. Instead of dying, they find themselves in a mysterious alien construct, possibly created by future humans. Inside of the structure, time is not linear, and McConaughey can see everything in his own life, including his daughter when she was very young. McConaughey uses gravity to manipulate her watch. Using Morse code, he's able to give her data from the black hole, which allows her to solve the gravity problem and save all of humanity from annihilation. I hope 50 seasons from now, when all the soil on Earth no longer is fertile, that Matthew McConaughey will return once again to save us. Just like how he saved us from those dragons. In the world of 12 Monkeys, humanity is almost wiped out by a pandemic. 
The only survivors are a handful of scientists and a bunch of prisoners that all live underground in a series of bunkers. There are basically only prisoners and scientists because if you don't contribute to the survival of humanity, you are a criminal and placed in a tiny cell. Since it's pretty much game over by this time for humanity, the scientists focus all of their resources on creating a time machine that can go back in time and figure out who exactly was responsible for the plague in the first place. Apparently, a group known as the Army of the Twelve Monkeys is responsible for the release of the disease. The scientists unfortunately cannot stop or destroy this play because that would alter the future timeline significantly, which means that time travel might never be invented, therefore creating a paradox. The time itself operates using a wormhole, but the technology is not really perfected, which is why they're using prisoners for these missions. In preparation for a trip, subjects were injected with chemicals, and when they finally arrive to a new timeline, they're usually quite disoriented. It should also be mentioned that time travel wasn't the most exact science, and oftentimes people were sent to the wrong place at the wrong time. And if that weren't bad enough, the more you travel, the more disoriented you become and you basically start slowly losing your mind. It also doesn't help that when you arrive to a new location, you usually are naked because only organic materials can time travel. We constantly talk about Edge of Tomorrow because one, it's our favorite biopic on Tom Cruise's life, and two, it's just an amazing movie. If you guys haven't seen the film by now, shame on you. Essentially, a crazy alien species known as the Mimics arrive on Earth and start destroying most of Europe and start spreading all across Asia. Humanity doesn't really stand a chance, the Mimics know exactly what our next moves are, and they continue to outsmart us. That is until Tom Cruise enters the battle and manages to kill an Alpha Mimic with a Claymore. See, the Alpha Mimics had a special ability. Whenever they were killed in battle, they could reset their day and their consciousness will travel back to before they died. This way, whenever a Mimic was defeated by the humans and the Alpha was killed, the Alpha can go back in time, report to the Omega Mimic, which is the central intelligence that runs the entire invasion, and tell them exactly what the humans had done. It's basically like reloading a video game from a checkpoint. Tom Cruise steals this ability from the Alpha when he claymores it and is drenched in its blood. This allowed him to become the immortal Scientology god he always was destined to be. He would use his endless response to slowly work his way to defeating the Mimic invasion. It should be noted that before he gets to the final level, he actually loses his ability to travel back in time and respawn. So when he faces the final boss, he actually has permadeath on. So respect. You really can't mention time travel without mentioning the Back to Future franchises and the beginning of Hollywood's infatuation with time travel incest. The method of time travel here is a strange limited production car known as the DeLorean, which has been modified by a strange inventor named Dr. Emmett Brown. By using a flux capacitor, the car could travel to both the past and future, but only if the car hits a speed of 88 miles per hour. Now, there is a rumor that DeLoreans in real life can only top out 88 miles per hour, but that's pretty much not true. They can hit about 105 or something like that. But back in the day, speedometers mostly did top out at 85. The DeLorean was definitely a cool looking car and very futuristic in the most awesome 80s way, but it was severely underpowered. In the world of Looper, time travel was invented and then quickly banned because it's a pretty dangerous piece of technology. But criminals still use it, but not for going back into the past and improving their own lives. Even criminals know not to mess with their past, no one wants to accidentally erase themselves. But in the future, it's incredibly hard to get rid of corpses because of tracking systems. So one of the best ways to get rid of someone is to send them to the past. There, an organization in the past will have a guy ready to officially close the loop, aka shoot them. Usually, the victim is tied up and has their head covered. They also have a bunch of silver bars attached to their bodies for payment. Since no one in the past is looking for that individual, it's basically the perfect crime. The problem for the people closing the loops is that hitmen usually have a lot of karma, and eventually the same organization that provided them with riches and wealth most likely will take it away from them as well. Hitmen don't really get to retire peacefully. To make matters worse, these criminal organizations usually send hitmen back to their younger selves for self-retirement. Think of the beauty and sheer evil of this action. The old hitman must confront the young hitman. The old hitman has lived his entire life, but still he doesn't want to die. The young hitman, upon realizing that he's looking at himself, will hesitate because no one really wants to kill himself. But if the young hitman doesn't do it, he'll get killed by the mob and he'll never get to live his entire life at all. The old hitman, if he's being rational, will realize this and also understand if the younger version of him dies, so will he. This guarantees that most assassins will do the smart thing and close their own loops. 
Before Keanu Reeves became the immortal vampire Jesus figure that he now is, he was just a normal guy in high school. That is until he was tasked with a school history presentation that would go on to change his life forever. Keanu was in a band with his best friend Ted, and together they played in an amazing 80s rock band known as the Wild Stallions, spelled the correct way. Unfortunately, they were failing their history class because they were concentrating so much on music. Keanu's father had threatened to send him to military school if he doesn't get better grades. This would end the Wild Stallions forever. Likely, their music would be so influential in human history that in 700 years in the future, humanity would finally create a utopia based on the Wild Stallions' music and philosophy. These future people created a time machine to travel back in time to help the Wild Stallions ace their history exam. They need an A-plus to pass. And so, the Wild Stallions would journey throughout history and gather famous individuals like Napoleon Bonaparte, Billy the Kid, Socrates, Sigmund Freud, Ludwig van Beethoven, Joan of Arc, Genghis Khan, and of course, Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Slayer, along with two princesses for themselves. When they return to their own time, they are able to give the most epic history presentation in human history. Hidden deep within an ancient Jedi temple on the planet of Lothal was a mysterious portal that led to an alternate plane within the Force. Within this plane were a collection of doors that led to various moments in time and space. In Star Wars, there were other dimensions like, for instance, hyperspace. This mysterious dimension was very unique and seemed only accessible to the Jedi. Every door led to an important moment in Jedi history, usually involving life and death situations. Now, Ezra Bridger was given access to this portal during the Galactic Civil War, and he was able to see a door through which he saw the moment his master, Kanan Jarrus, had died. Unfortunately, in a cruel twist of fate, Ezra was unable to save his master because Kanan died holding back a massive explosion that would have killed him, creating a paradox if he saved him. So instead, Ezra walks through another door where Ahsoka Tano is about to be killed by Darth Vader during a battle on Malachor, giving the important Grey Jedi an extension on her life. Honestly, in Terminator, I've lost track of who the machines are sending back in time and who the Resistance is sending back in time and which machines are trying to protect people and which ones are trying to kill people. But the point is, only Arnold Schwarzenegger matters and he has to be naked when he time travels because not being naked when you time travel is for losers. And on that very high note, I remind you that just because you assume society makes me wear pants doesn't mean I am wearing pants at any given moment. This is why we frame the way we do. I am always one v-neck away from naked time travel. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed our video about time traveling. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. As usual, my name is Alan, reminding you that life is a movie and you are the protagonist.